What is going on, everybody? My name is Pat. I am the voice behind 98% of the recaps that you see on this channel, but I'm also the guy that does all those 60-second movie reviews that hopefully you watch. If you don't, I've got you covered with my 2023 recap of all the movies that I've seen, the best and the worst. In this video, we're going to be looking at the best movies I watch in 2023. So the way I always have worked it is if I've never seen a movie before, I write it on the list, no matter what year it came out. Because I always got sick of every year the Oscars coming out, and the only thing that I could tell you was I just disagreed with the Oscars. It seems like every year I can't stand their selections. But when someone would say, well, what was the best movie you saw, I could never give them an answer. And then it becomes a question of, well, did the movie actually come out this year, or was it a film festival movie that came out last year, but it got released in theaters this year? So I just scrapped that idea completely, and I just started writing down every new movie that I saw in the calendar year. And you can find those movies in my description. I got to 91 movies. The order is simply the order that I watch them in. If you see an asterisk next to the movie, it just means I saw it in theaters, and the asterisk plus means I didn't pay for it. I probably paid for like a handful of movies this year. It's very fortunate as a member of the press that I got to see a lot of them for free. But those are all the ones. 91 movies, and now we're going to break down the best movies of the year. There is one movie that is very popular that is missing. I'll tell you right now, I didn't see Barbie. And the reason I didn't see Barbie wasn't just some toxic masculinity. It was because I'm going to die on this hill. When Barbie was announced, the, f the first announcement they made of Barbie, I rolled my eyes. And I said, America does not need this. We are not asking for this. Why are we being given this? And I am thrilled that the movie came out and it did well and it actually had a deep message about women empowerment and all that. Uh, I think it's an important message. But my fear was that Hollywood was not going to sit there and go, man, look at this, a movie made about women, uh, made by women. We should do more of that. My fear was that Hollywood would go, no, you know what we need? We need Hungry Hungry Hippos. That's basically what's happening. I think they're making like a Shoots and Ladders movie and it's, it's not the message, so it was lost on it. But uh, the fact that I crapped all over it when it got announced, I feel like I just need to die on the hill and, and not see it. Even though it's getting rave reviews and everyone sees it, loves it, I get it. But I'll tell you right now, that movie's not on my list because I just, I, I didn't see it. I was a caveman who just died on a hill alone. But before we get in the top five, I'm going to give you the honorable mentions of movies that I think are absolutely worth seeing and that I considered for top five, but just didn't make the cut. The first movie I'll talk about is the movie Air. You can find this movie on Amazon Prime right now, and I absolutely love this. Now, this movie was made for a guy like me because I'm a huge sports fan, and I also love business movies. Like, I love movies like The Big Short. Uh, there's a couple other business movies on here that you'll see. Like, The Founder is, is a movie that I love. Like, movies just about the business uh, world and how products are made and all that. Like, I'm a sucker for those. So you combine those two worlds together and I'm going to be a fan. But also, I think what this movie did so well, and I ended up saying this in my review for it, is they don't focus on Michael Jordan. Air literally focuses on the creation of the Jordan brand, who came up with it, how important it is to Nike, how it almost didn't happen. And they do so in a really, really well done way. I don't think it's going to get nominated for anything. Um, but I, I think it's a really, really good movie. I think it's really, really strong. I think it's one of Amazon's best movies they've come out with. And if you're a fan of biopics, Air is absolutely a movie that, that you should see. The next movie I'll talk about is a movie called You Hurt My Feelings. I don't know where you can find this movie, but it's an A24 movie starring Julie Louise Dreyfus, and it is phenomenal. It's really, really well done. It's about a couple and a therapist who realizes he's not that good at being a therapist, but he's also dealing with some issues at home with his wife. And it's, it's a movie that I think everybody that watches it is going to resonate with because they've all been in similar uncomfortable situations of people finding out the little white lie that you might have been telling somebody not to hurt their feelings but it's it's really really well done and I was a big huge fan of this one you hurt my feelings once again I'm sorry I don't know where you can find it but when you do end up seeing it on a streaming service absolutely check this one out the third movie I'll talk about for honorable mention was across the spider verse I don't think it really needs to be said, but this movie was phenomenal. Uh, it's not just a kid's movie. It's an adult movie as well. For all you Marvel nerds out there, we haven't gotten blessed with many good Marvel movies in the, uh, the, the what is it, Phase 5 that they're calling it. This is actually a really, really well done movie that I think you can take your kids to, but you're also going to really enjoy it as well as a parent. I will say you probably should see the first one, and the first one's really, really well done. I think believe both of them are available on Netflix right now, but Across the Spider-Verse is tremendous. And to follow that up, another kid's movie, 
is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I went into this with very low expectations. Now, I was a huge fan of Ninja Turtles when I was younger, but I can't tell you anything other than their names and then Shredder and Splinter. And I didn't have really high expectations for this one, but I took my four-year-old at the time and kind of just sat back. And this was, I mean, Joe, not Joe Rogan. Who, who did this? Uh, Seth Rogan. Seth Rogan did a really, really good job with this movie. Uh, he is the, the idea and brains behind this one. And he made a movie that is entertaining enough for kids, but also very, very entertaining for adults as well. That there's a lot of jokes in there that you as an adult will absolutely enjoy and you're going to be cracking up and then you're going to have your four-year-old going, why is that funny? And you're going to go, oh, I'll tell you a little later date. But really, really well done movie, a really, really well done animated movie. And it's kind of in the same art concept as Across the Spider-Verse. So if you're one of those nerds that really, really is into animation, I think this movie will end up, uh, end up tickling your fancy, if you will. And uh, I'm looking forward to the second one that they do. The fourth, fifth, sixth movie, I don't know what we're on, is uh, Fair Play. This is a Netflix original movie starring Phoebe Danover, Danover, the girl from Bridgerton. It is a really, really intense, uh, high-strung movie about two people who are a couple who are working at a hedge fund, and the guy is, thinks he's a shoe-in for a promotion, and he's peacocking around a little bit. And then he finds out that not only did he not get the promotion, but his fiance got the promotion instead, and now he has to work under her. And the struggle that takes place, not only in their relationship, but their working lives as well. How he has to deal with that conflict of working under somebody that he doesn't think he should. This movie is awesome. Now, the ending was a little a little questionable. It uh, didn't really seem like the director knew how to end it. But, yeah, it, it, I, I was a big fan of this one. And, and for me, Netflix movies that come out around... October and November, basically the award movies, they're always hit or miss. They're either really, really good or they're trash. And this one to me was a really, really good movie. Now, I talked earlier about those movies that I like that are about business. And one of those movies was Dumb Money. This is the movie about the GameStop shortage of a couple years ago and basically the guy behind it. Why he did it, how he finagled the system, and how he convinced a bunch of other people to buy into GameStop, forcing a lot of hedge funds to have to go under. And how those hedge funds ended up dealing with it. Uh, at first, they just kind of thought it was small potatoes. But I'm, I love the movie. Uh, I thought it was really, really good. Uh, it, Paul Danover. Paul Danover. Paul Dano. Now I've got Phoebe Danover. I don't even know how to say her name. Paul Dano. Hit thumbs down for that. Uh, was uh, really, really, really strong in the lead. But then there's also a bunch of other character actors that pop up that you'll recognize. And. Uh, I, I think this was one that kind of flew under the radar, but if you're a fan of the business angle of movies and just business in general and the stock market, I think this one is a, is a must-see. There's a Netflix documentary about it right now that I think is really, really good too, but this one's just more of an entertainment-based one that will, uh, will keep you entertained. Another one which was a strong candidate for top five, and it's a movie that I, I liked the more and more that I thought about it, was The Holdovers. Um, this one stars Paul Giamatti, and I said in my review, it reminded me a little bit of uh, Breakfast Club, in the sense that you've got people from different backgrounds that are completely opposite of one another being forced to be together for an extended period of time where they end up gelling and bonding a little bit. Paul Giamatti's getting nominated for this movie, and he absolutely deserves it because this movie was way funnier than I thought it was going to be, but it's one of those films where when I walked out, I went, I, I liked it. Can't really tell you why I liked it, but I liked it. And the more I've thought about it, the more I've come to the conclusion that it's just a really, really good story. And it's entertaining. And that's what I look for in movies, is just to be entertained. And at no point was I really bored throughout the movie. It is a cool period piece, and the director of photography obviously tried to get that 70s feel with the the film that they used and the look that they used. But Paul Giamatti is really, really good in this, and his quips and his angle. I think we all have met somebody like his character. So definitely check out The Holdovers, which is, I believe, available now on Peacock. Yeah, Peacock. The next one I'll talk about, which you can rent right now, is Cher. Uh, I say that because it's, it's literally Cher with a question mark. This one is an indie film that I don't know if anyone other than myself has seen, but I loved it. it it's like an hour and 20, hour and 30. This movie flies by, and the star of it, is, uh, I mean, the, the, I'm drawing a blank. Hit thumbs down for this. The star of it, he was in Billy Madison. He was in, 
uh, get out. He is, uh, I don't know, and someone will tell me in the comments, but I try to do these all in one take, so I'm not going to edit it. But look, this movie was an interesting concept, and the concept is a guy wakes up in a room, and he's got a computer and nothing else. He has no idea how he got there, and all of a sudden he starts realizing he's being rewarded for doing stupid things. And with those reward points, he can turn them in for food, for clothing, for other goods. And it's a question of who's doing this, how he's getting rewarded. And then he starts connecting with other people that are in the same predicament. And it gets deeper than that. But it's loosely based off of a, of a true story, actually, of, of a guy in Japan who was on a game show. And it was basically the Truman Show. And he had no idea. And he was trying having to do stupid stuff. And they were rewarding him. And when it finally got revealed that he was on a game show, it really messed them up. But this movie is more of a fun angle on that. And it's really well done. And I forgive me, but the kid who stars in this, um, Malcolm something, uh, you know, Pat, do your research. But he's really, really good. And this is a kid that was in a movie called The Way Back, which I really liked. He was uh, one of the stars of American Vandal season two. Really, really good actor, and he's on the come up. But this movie was was well worth your time. As I said, only an hour and a half. It moves by. And um, from there, we'll segue into, from an indie, a really, really uh, blockbuster hit. Hunger Birds. Hunger Birds. Jeez. Hunger Games. Songbirds of ballads and snakes, whatever. I'm sorry, folks. I am running on little sleep. But the Hunger Games prequel that came out this year. I'm a big Hunger Games fan. I didn't know what to expect with this prequel, and I like the fact that it didn't necessarily just focus on the Hunger Games. And I also like the fact that it didn't focus on the first Hunger Games. I think they could go even deeper with this prequel series. I think they could focus on the first Hunger Games. This one focuses focuses on the 10th, but it really focuses on Snow and how he became the way he he was in the Katniss Everdeen Hunger Games. But this one's a a really, really well-done prequel. I liked it. There are some questionable things in it, but overall, I, I left the theater entertained. The next one I'll talk about is a biopic that is either hit or miss with a lot of people, and it's Napoleon. Napoleon, for me, was a hit because it, was, it wasn't it was what I thought it was going to be. You know, I, I was expecting Gladiator with these battle scenes and these this epic mantra of just you know, blood and gore and battle and all that. And that's what you thought you were going to get when they released like a nine-minute teaser trailer, and it's nothing but a battle. But instead, you get a very insecure world leader and an entertaining movie. Like, this was done really, really, really uh, creatively. I, I mean, it was funny, and it probably shouldn't have been funny, but it was funny. And they went with a comedic angle in a movie that was about a serious topic. And I think most biopics go super, super serious. And this this didn't do that. And that's what I liked about it. But if you're looking for one of those, you know, just epic battles, you're not really going to get that too much. The battles that they do have in it are good, but I liked it. I thought it moved. I've talked to other people who thought it sucked. Another movie that I liked that a lot of people thought sucked was Leave the World Behind. This is a Netflix movie. It's got uh, a lot of big name people in it. And it's, it's a movie where the ending had a lot of people going, what the hell did I just watch? Now, I felt satisfied, but if you didn't feel satisfied, I understand why. I mean, I had a coworker come in today and went, I watched this movie with Julia Roberts this weekend. Man, it sucked. I went, oh, what, what, what movie? Oh, it had Ethan Hawke in it. Oh, are you talking about Leave the World Behind? Yeah, that was trash. And I went, oh, I actually really enjoyed it. I didn't know where they were going with the movie. Once it kind of gets described of what is going on, I felt like I got resolution. Now, a lot of people didn't. I understand that. But for me, I liked Leave the World Behind. Uh, I'd check it out, but it's a, decis- it's a divisive movie. And the final honorable mention on my list is Leo, another Netflix movie that is animated. It's an Adam Sandler movie. I was entertained from the jump. All right. I convinced my five-year-old to watch this movie. And at first, I, you know, it's, it's an Adam Sandler movie. So you're kind of going in with a, how good is it going to be? This movie's hilarious. Like it's a really, really well done kids movie. And it's a lot like the other kids movies I've brought up on this list. There are enough jokes in here that will keep the parents entertained. That will also keep, you know, the child entertained as well. So you're not going to be bored out of your mind watching this movie. Leo was was really, really well done. And uh, I hope that Adam Sandler delves more into doing these animated movies because it was, it was really good. And now, finally, for the top five movies of the year in reverse order. And we will go with number five, John Wick 4. I didn't know. 
that these movies could continuously get better. Because look, it is tough. When you get to the fourth movie of any franchise, it is tough to keep it going at a high level and improve on it. And yet, the team behind John Wick have continued to do so. Where not only have these movies gotten better, they've gotten longer, and they've gotten as equally, if not more entertaining in my opinion. You know, the storyline continues in John Wick 4, and the ending was emotional. And I was surprised about that, but their, uh, their, their way of creating new villains and diving deeper and deeper into that underground world has me wanting more. Like, I'm frothing at the mouth for more John Wick. And it was something that I did not think was going to happen when I went into the second John Wick movie. You know, the first one is a sleeper hit. The second one, you're like, all right, how do they follow this? And they did it even better. And the third one, and now you've got a, a movie that's pushing three hours that is amazing. And I absolutely loved it. And in terms of action movies, man, this John Wick 4 is it. And if you have not touched the John Wick franchise because Keanu Reeves and he doesn't make good movies anymore and, you know, the the, the whole idea of uh, guys going after Avengers for his dog, put that aside, watch the movies, watch the set, you'll be entertained. They are not just hit them up action movies. There is a storyline behind this, a deep storyline, and they are really, really good and I want more. The fourth movie on my list, I didn't know if this was going to make top five. I thought it would make honorable mention, but the more that this movie has sat with me, it snuck into the top five, and that movie is Saltburn. And if you see it, you know what I'm talking about. I don't want to give anything away about this movie. I try really hard to go into movies and not watch trailers because I want to go in with a completely open mind. If I can go into a movie and all I know is the name of the movie and maybe a couple people in it, but I don't know anything about it, I'm, I'm hooked, right? When I went to go watch Dumb Money, I had to go in the theaters, and they had a trailer for Saltburn, and I was a little bit relieved because after watching the trailer, I still didn't know what it was about. And I don't want to tell you what it's about, but it's a movie that you just have to watch. It's uncomfortable, but it's done so in such a creative way that when it finally wraps up, you're, you're kind of like blown away. Uh, Barry Keoghan is incredible in this movie, and he deserves to get nominated and, uh, yeah, I, th I think Emerald Fenning is going to get nominated uh, for director, script, all that crap. But this is just such a creative movie that you just have to see it. And I'm telling you right now, it is going to make you uncomfortable because it made me squirm in my seat. But it just sat with me. And it reminds me of one of other, uh, another Barry Keoghan movie called Killing of a Sacred Deer. And if you've seen that movie, like, I, w I went away from that movie going, like, I don't know if I like it or not. And three and four days later, I'm still thinking about it. And Saltburn is still living rent-free in my head. And I saw it three, four months ago. So Saltburn's number four. Number three on the list is a movie that I, I guarantee not enough people have seen. And for a while, this was my number two movie of the year before it got bumped late. Uh, actually, for a while, it was my number one movie of the year. But Blackberry is a movie that deserves absolute praise. This is a movie about the creation of Blackberry and also the downfall of Blackberry, but it has done so so incredibly well that it's unlike a lot of business biopics. And it's it's hard to really explain. You know, Glenn Howerton is so good in this movie. I'm not an Always Sunny fan. I'm just and, and amazing because I live in I live in Philadelphia. I'm not an, a fan of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I'm not even a huge fan of him. Like every interview I've seen him went in, I think he kind of sounds like a dick. But this was such a departure for him than, than being that character in It's Always Sunny. And he absolutely crushed it. He crushed it. Jay Baruchel, great in this. Um, yeah, I, I really like the director. I, once again, I should have done my research, so smash thumbs down for that. But the director, I believe, did a movie called uh, Operation Avalanche, and I like that as well. But he, he, he doesn't do many of them, many movies, but the ones he does do are, are indie. And he does them at a very, very high level. And Blackberry is, I believe they actually split it up into three parts that you can see on AMC+. Plus. But if you get a chance, like, w w just try to find this movie somewhere and watch it. It is well, well, well worth your time. Once again, this was my number one movie of the year until I saw the number one movie of my year. Um, but for a while, it was my number two. And Blackberry, if you're a fan of those type of movies about the creation of businesses and all the backstory and stuff, Blackberry is, is it. And it deserved a lot more hype and a lot more run in theaters than it got. And I am going to stump hard for BlackBerry any chance I get. 
The number two movie on the, the list is good news. You can see it in theaters now uh, if you're watching this when it gets released in January. But American Fiction is the number two movie on my list, and in most years it probably would be number one. First of all, it is very, very tough to make a movie in 2023 that is funny because everyone's looking for, to, to cancel everybody and comedy's kind of dead. This movie had me laughing from like minute two. This movie is not only extremely creative, I think it's one of the most creative movies of the year, but it is so amazingly well done. Jeffrey Wright, phenomenal in this movie. He, he, he absolutely crushes this role. No surprise, he's a great actor. But Sterling K. Brown plays his brother, and the chemistry that these two have with one another is amazing. This movie deserves to get nominated. If it's not, I'm rioting. I'm showing up at the Oscars, and I am, I am going to have like a hunger strike right then and there for the, the writer and creator of this movie because the script was something where I'm sitting there laughing and enjoying the movie, questioning if I'm falling into a hole which was the whole point of the movie. Uh, you know, should I be liking this movie because the movie's kind of talking to somebody like me? If you see it, you know what I'm talking about. But make time to go out and see this movie. This movie is worth your money. Um, so if you get a chance to go see American Fiction, do it. Because as I said, it is absolutely hysterical. It will have you laughing. Not a lot of movies can say that. And also, it's January. Not a lot of good movies come out. So go see American Fiction. My number two movie that I saw in 2023. And finally... My number one movie in 2023, you probably could have guessed it by now because I haven't mentioned it, Oppenheimer. Look, it's chalk, but I, I saw this movie three times in theaters, and I was entertained each time. I was never bored. Christopher Nolan crushed it, and I'm a huge Christopher Nolan fan, so I'm a little biased in this, a little bit of a Christopher Nolan fanboy, but with that said, I didn't like Tenet at all. I was confused. Uh, I think most people were, but for this one, I, I thought he... He absolutely nailed it. I mean, he made a three-hour movie about building a bomb, and you, you, you never, I mean, you see the bomb go off, but you see the bomb go off in a test, and it was more about the guy and the struggle and the internal struggle, but also piecing together different eras and stuff, and when it all culminates together with Jay Oppenheimer and, uh, and, and Einstein sitting talking about something, I mean, the last scene of that movie is, is just absolutely beautiful. And that wrapped it up for me. Like the last scene of the movie when, when Oppenheimer is talking to Einstein and Einstein walks away, it, 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 I sat back and I went, that's the number one movie of the year. And then I had proceeded to go two more times to see it because I, I wanted to see it again. So it, it's pretty rare for me to go, oh, three and a half hour movie, like I'm in. And to think that I sat there for ten and a half hours and watched the same movie again uh, and paid for it twice, albeit the one time I kind of snuck in. I, I saw an IMAX and you know, I bought a ticket for another movie and just kind of just kind of made my way in. Um, you know, the bad boy cinema. But Oppenheimer, yeah, crush it. And if you get a chance to see it in theaters, I know they're like running every once in a while. They're putting it back in just to kind of get get some money generated into movie theaters. But if you do get a chance to see it in theaters, that's the place to see it. I, I don't care what home theater setup you got. It, it deserves to be seen in IMAX. But I know that we're running out of time to see that. So there, there are my top five. You've got John Wick 4, Saltburn, Blackberry, American Fiction, and of course, Oppenheimer. Now is the part of the video where I ask you guys, so please subscribe to the channel. Hit thumbs up if you like this. Smash that thumbs down button because I haven't seen Barbie, and I won't see Barbie, and I'll die on that hill. Just smash it and write nasty comments in the comment section because I love that. I love uh, getting shit on by, by people that watch my movies. Uh, or my, my, my movie. This isn't a movie, jackass. Hit thumbs down for that, who watch my videos. But no, in all seriousness, thank you for getting this part of the recap. Um, I'm looking forward to 2024 and see what has that's in store. I've already gotten two movies under my belt in 2024, so, uh, and I'm seeing a third one tomorrow, so that'll be number three. Once this video does drop, I'll probably have three or four under my belt. But I'm trying to hit 100 movies in 2024, just like I did in 2022. I was slacking in 2023, only 91. I apologize for that. But uh, hopefully you guys take some of my uh, advice and go enjoy some movies and you know, if you think like me, you'll enjoy them. And if you don't, you're going to smash thumbs down and you're going to want to uh, probably punch my face in because I have one of those faces that you just kind of want to want to rearrange. So I'm going to go now and get a nap. But um, yeah, hopefully I'll have the uh, the one for worse movies, which is always, I think, my favorite part uh, of 20 of the end of a year is doing my top five worst movies of the year because top five best are like, eh, but top five worst. Like, let's let's really get into the shit that I watched that I suffered through so you don't have to. And those are the movies to just stay away from. But that'll be up soon. All right, see you.